And she has been back <laughs> is in the building. Hi. How are you? I am good. Yeah? Yeah, we need a moment for you to just stand and like twirl. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, we just... Nobody has ever asked that of me. You look beautiful. So. Okay, cool. So we're just going to do that. And I'm wearing sandals look today. Look at that. It's just... da 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 I think they'd be like... Mm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh my God! Thank you, thank you, Shaz. You look beautiful. Asante sana. See <laughs> love in the air. Today we're talking about re relationships, marriages, and all of that put together. Yes. But today we're looking at giving too much and the consequences of that. Mm. And it sort of feels like a contradictory statement. I know. Because when you decide that I'm going to love you, that I'm going to be here for you, that I will live with you, that I choose you, then you sort of like give it all. You give your all into it. And today we're going to look at how probably we should be monitoring how much we give in. <laughs> so it's, it's such a tight rope. It's such a balance of a conversation because... Yes, there's always that 100% when you get into a relationship, both of you give 100% okay. and that unconditional love. But, you know, just unconditional love itself also can be so dangerous when you don't understand what unconditional love should look like oh. and what it should look like coming back to you. Because a lot of people say, I love unconditionally no matter what mm -hmm. but it should be i love unconditionally in beautiful boundaries that we have for each other so we both are always healthy emotionally mentally and physically with ourselves and each other okay. so it's 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 a beautiful balance of you know is there a consequence of giving too much mm -hmm. and to the wrong relationship yes there's a huge consequence. Because so we need to know what kind of a relationship yes. it is fast. Yes. If it is good for you, if it is healthy, mm -hmm. then we start giving. And even when we're giving unconditionally, then we need to have boundaries? Yes. Oh, God. It this feels is, like such a twist. <laughs> it's like a drop the mic moment. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? It's, it, it is exactly that. And if you look at everyone that's getting into relationships right now, they suddenly this rush that I want to belong in a relationship, I want to feel the love of someone, and I also have so much love inside of me to want to give a person. Yeah. But then we're getting to relationships where we're not thinking the way we used to a couple of generations ago, which is I'm dating you for the long term, for marriage, for children, thick and thin. Right now, it's become the norm. There used to be a time when you used to hear people say they've dated so much, they've been around so much before they end up getting married. Now it's the norm. It's okay to date so much. It's okay to explore and just look for anyone and anything. Yeah. But then that leaves so many people feeling, if I'm on my own, I'm lonely. So in mm. order for me to not feel lonely, I just want to dive into a relationship. But then I'm not aware of what is this relationship going to give me back? Is there an us or is it just me giving to a relationship all on my own right now? And now this is a, there's a beautiful balance of the people pleasers that mm -hmm. come into this situation. Yeah. It's the people that grew up in childhoods where, you know, you're neglected by your parents or your caregiver and you have this deep need for love. You have this deep need to do anything to receive love. And so not only do you people please in every relationship in your life, which wears you out and exhausts you, but you especially people please in the relationship you get into, which is intimate. Oh, and so now in the beginning of that relationship, the person you're giving to will normally take very well. It's amazing. It's lovely. Mm -hmm. I, I mm -hmm. probably haven't had someone give me so much attention, so much love. Their whole life stops for me. Yeah. In fact, they like everything I like because the people pleaser almost loses their identity in order to just, you know, if I love you so much, then you love me back, mm -hmm. right? You'll never let me go. You'll give me all this attention for the rest of my life. So my sacrifice is myself in order to give you in this relationship. That is a huge sacrifice. It's huge. And so many people don't even realize it until you have discussions like this. Mm -hmm. They don't realize, I am the people pleaser. I am the person that would do anything for the relationship. But at some point in the relationship, the taker also gets exhausted and they need space and they need time alone. 
And then I look at it as resentment now. Yes. Oh, I'm unhappy. You're not grateful. Exactly. I stopped everything for you. Yes. I gave I, up. Everything. I gave up it all just for you. And now you're saying you don't want it, that I'm suffocating you. Exactly. You know, that, those are the lines that we hear most of the times. Like, she is so suffocating. He's so suffocating. Yes. He's just, every time I turn, he's there asking <laughs> me I'm okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And so, you know, now what you end up having is the, the ple people please are feeling all this neglect. They're feeling all this abandonment because they've never learned that it's okay to also be the taker. It's okay to be in a relationship that looks healthy, but people don't know what does a healthy relationship look like. Mm -hmm. So many relationships have this dynamic where people come to you saying, I'm always giving. I will put yeah. my whole day aside to make sure your day comes first. And the person who's taking, the person that's on the other side of that relationship, also never stops to think, I'm getting so much love. What yeah. does my partner need back? Is my partner fulfilling their needs just of the day, not even emotionally what they require during the day, but just their needs of the day? Because I've seen people pleasers who will do anything for the other person. The other person needs their lunch dropped. I will make it perfectly and drop you your lunch. I will be the person that sits in the car half an hour to pick you up because you know what? I don't want you to wait when you come out. But nobody's thinking about the other person. What do they have to do during the day? Mm. Do they have the time to mm. even fulfill it? Are they exhausted? And so eventually, people pleasers in relationship, one of the biggest consequences is resentment. They end up resenting not only you but themselves, but they don't realize it. But in order to fulfill the resentment even more, I'll give you even more. Oh, no. The last bit of what I have, because the hope is always that you will see me, acknowledge me, and love me back. But how do I get recharged? How do I know? Probably I've grown up, like you said, it's something that probably starts from when I was a child. So I've always known that I give. That is what I do. Probably I used to give my siblings. I used to give up everything so they can have a better life. Probably I was the first one and I was told, you know you have to take care of the little ones. So I grew up knowing that that mm. is the way of life. Knowing that I have to keep doing this because when I do that, my little brother will be like, thank you, and I'll get a hug. And probably that day they'll, not, they'll allow me to play with them. You know, there's little beautiful things that happen at that point. But now, grown up, how do I know that I have this weakness? And even in a relationship, how do I identify that they will always be taking from me, intentionally or not? And that I'm giving over and above what I have, what I should, with no boundaries at all. And I'm just going to throw it to you guys out there. Are you experiencing that? Do you experience like in your relationship there's someone or yourself who's giving over and above uh, what they should? Are you feeling tired of it? Are you wishing and hoping that probably they'd give you maybe a quarter back mm -hmm. from what you give them? Please write in to us, triple one, triple four. Triple One. We'll be right back after this break. Welcome back to Full Circle, our Thursday edition. Shazmin Bank is in the building and we are talking about the consequences of giving too much in a relationship now we've figured that giving is okay but with boundaries and giving in a relationship that is healthy and the outcome of over giving and it being taken away from you without getting something back results into resentment yes now when we look at the giver who's always doing this and probably has learned it over time how do they is it something they know consciously they're doing or they just do it just because that's the only thing they know how to so it almost becomes their nature and they don't realize it till somebody talks to them, somebody tells them, or they eventually realize this relationship almost feels because my partner also is not pausing to come and tell me, you are giving me so much love, but I'm filling you back. I'm yeah. equally giving you back. And so the dynamic of a beautiful relationship is both of us are giving. And then sometimes the understanding of a beautiful relationship is because of life, we both always won't give at the same time. Someone will always be a little lower. 
but you both have the energy, you know, somebody on this side has the energy to hold up because you're responsible if, enough to know I'm going to come back and rise. Yeah. I can't leave my partner alone holding float for so long. That's the beautiful dynamic of a healthy relationship. There's that ebb and flow because of life. But when you're in a situation where you are the overgiver, your partner also understands that and sometimes just remains the taker because it's beneficial for them. That is the intentional beat of it. Yes, okay. exactly. And that sometimes now where it borderlines codependency and it borderlines narciss narcissistic, it borderlines a toxic relationship. But that also being said, there's so many couples that didn't realize that was the dynamic. And when the other person, the, the person that's not the giver in the relationship starts to realize, I didn't know I'm wearing down my partner. I didn't know I'm exhausting them. I want to fill them back. I want to give to the relationship back. So that's two completely different scenarios. But the very common one ends up being the taker loves it. It fills them up because now at some point they also understand this person that loves me so much cannot do without me. Mm -hmm. And so now I become slightly controlling. I know how to manipulate the emotions. I know that they need me so much. But the key is to be able to say at what cost. Okay. So if you're this giver in a relationship right now and you realize I'm always putting my needs second. In fact, my needs don't even get met, not only for my kids, family, but my spouse, but my coworkers. Mm -hmm. But at what cost is the question I have to end up asking myself. Is it at the cost of me? Because a lot of the times I don't have the self-esteem to feel I'm worthy of a better relationship. I'm worthy of being in more. And that the possibility of somebody that can love me more is out there. And so somebody who is this typical giver sort of feels I will make excuses for bad behavior. They're the people that make excuses for the cheating. They make the excuses for abusive behavior because in their minds, there's nothing better. Mm -hmm. And I'm the savior of this person. I will make them better. I will. If I could yes. just love them a bit more. Exactly. Probably the reason they're cheating is because I'm not making really good food at home. Oh, I'm not giving my time. Yes. So now what happens? I'll give over and above the time that I had. I'll wait up for you. Yes. I'll come pick you up. I'll learn new recipes because I am the problem. And I will lose myself yes. to almost see who is it you're cheating on me with and yes. how can I become more of that person? It is not you taking a step back to realize I will not tolerate that because that is not my self-worth. I might not have the ideal person out there right now, which is everybody's fear, which is if I'm going to leave this relationship, I must have that backup right under my arm yeah. because I know I can jump into something else because now I'll be codependent, not realizing I'm trying to get out of this relationship as a giver to breathe, to analyze who I am, to understand and work on my self-worth, to understand and work on self-love, to build my self-confidence, to work on my own self-motivation, because all of this comes from me. It'll never come from the other person. That's true. So it's for the, the giver to be able to take a step back and say, I want to remain a beautiful giver. I don't want to be the toxic giver that also changes the other person to a point they feel I deserve this kind of love. Mm. You should do this for me. You should tolerate this for me because you're yeah. enabling behavior back and forth. And that's where you both become codependent on each other's bad behavior in that relationship. Oh, goodness. Because when the taker now figures out that this is your weakness, especially if they're borderline toxic, mm. then they'll be like, all you need is when I feel like I'm losing you or you're getting tired of this, then I will pour in a bit of attention. Yes. I'll pour in a bit of love. And I don't know why this sort of like doubles up with the attachment styles that we talked about yes, a couple of weeks absolutely. ago. Absolutely. It, 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 it completely borderlines with avoidant and anxious because you're triggering both parts in this one person that just wants to be loved. But the thing here is it's not to stop being a giver. Okay. But it's to notice I need to give me first. And there's nothing wrong with that. Giving me means I need to be a better receiver which means I need to learn to also receive help 
It doesn't mean I'm weak if I do. It means I need to learn to receive love from other people around, which means I need to be able to have friends outside of this dynamic and this relationship. It means the isolation I've probably taken into my life from my hobbies, my crafts, my love, what could I pick up on again? Was mm. I stitching? Was I painting? Was I hiking? Yeah. What was I doing before this relationship that I can also fill myself? So when I come into a healthy relationship, this is what it would look like. Mm -hmm. It would look like this is all of me, all different sides of me. Yeah. I'm willing to give all of that to you, but I'm also willing to take from you love, new experiences, new, anything that you're willing to give. So it's not almost I come into this relationship with a halt. You don't have to do anything. I will just love you through all your bad behavior. No matter what you do, I will love you consequence eventually ends up being almost the death of yourself but you don't realize it you're internally slowly losing who you are at the cost of wanting love so much from somebody else validation so much from somebody else self-worth and a feeling of belonging because that's what all human beings want yeah. their deepest fear is i won't be loved it's it's a universal fear we all have it but most of us have the beautiful boundary of I will give yeah. because I want a beautiful relationship to grow. In me, giving means we're growing. In you, giving back means we're growing. But as a giver, it's in me giving, it's almost like you're consistently watering that beautiful plant, but the water over pours out of the pot. The, the flower is oversaturated. It's yes. suffocating and dying, but you just keep, keep pouring. pouring. I'm looking at the end result of um, an overgiver who's being taken advantage of. Mm. And you've had of situations where they stepped out of the relationship or probably they've been dumped and they don't understand why because I gave it to you everything. And apparently that is the problem. <laughs> Yes. So it becomes a problem that you were just there. You were like a shadow in my life. I couldn't live for me and I couldn't do all of that. And then they step out of that relationship or probably are pushed out of that relationship and are not able to love like that ever again. Or they end up loving like that all over again oh, no. the wrong way. No. Because it turns around and I, I would turn around to myself and say, you didn't appreciate all that love I gave. Yes. Who else will ever do that for you? Who else will put their life on pause for you? You can appreciate that. Somebody out there will. But it's almost like you have this, this you, you radiate, like when you go out into the world, you radiate this energy that sort of zooms out everyone that's looking for a healthy relationship. And you attract, you attract the next person that almost sees this red bulb going on that says... It's so weird that you say this, Codependent, Shaz. I'm looking for oh codependent, and you will pull... And that's why you have people say, how is it that I am dating the same kind of person, person ever? Every single... So there's a gentleman, we had a conversation a couple of, I think, months ago, and he was seated right there, and he... <laughs> <laughs> of course he was seated right there. <laughs> and... He, he was talking about how he struggled with uh, getting into toxic relationships mm. and it happened over and over. And he was just saying to me, Mikali, they scout, they know. Mm. It didn't make sense that I'd move out of one relationship and get into another relationship exactly the same as the other one. So he grew up being very shy and reserved and wanting to be loved or to belong. So th he'd get into the same dynamic where he will overpour mm -hmm. because he wants the acknowledgement of you are good, you're enough, mm -hmm. I appreciate it. And when that ended, he'd get into exactly the same relationship. Yes. Or the, you, you, it, you literally scout out the boss that will never see it. Yes. You will scout out the friends that will never see it. You will scout out siblings and parents that will never see it. It is because you you just have this energy, literally, and it's like a light bulb that people of that nature can almost see you and they feel you and they are also pulled initially to rescue you because they almost see you as the drowning victim. Yeah. And then when they just literally take you out of the water and put you on this little boat, mm -hmm. it's now up to you to do the rest for this relationship all over again. Oh my God. 
and it will never ever change and that's why they say you know it's not about jumping from relationship to relationship because you are carrying all that baggage with you mm -hmm. and it's almost on a date when you walk in to a new date with somebody and you turn around and they pull out a chair for you and you're like okay give me a second because you're lugging all this other luggage behind you and you get into the lift with them and you're like hold the door because I'm lugging all this other emotional luggage with me it's everywhere you go and it's until you literally pause and realize and this is why I say that beautiful window of when you're a teenager almost whatever you've gone through you have the teenage window to be able to say it was because of my parents but at some point when you become an adult that window closes you now get educated you are learned you are aware and you cannot blame your parents anymore now as the adult you have to turn around and say you know therapy and therapists allow me to look at how I feel and how I behave mm -hmm. and justify it with what I went through as a child mm -hmm. but in coaching you now are taught you've got to stand on your own two feet with full responsibility of awareness of who you are you cannot blame your parents in fact you've got to thank them for the way they brought you up because if you look at it it's opened you into a beautiful person but we think it's closed us. Yeah. And so now this close, we almost walk like this into the next relationship, hoping someone will come and just put their arms around us and fix us. But you know what? Fixing me isn't enough. I have to fix you. I am going to give everything to the company I work for at the cost of my energy. But you know what? At some point one day they'll see me and I do the same thing over in my relationship. Over, over and I am so dependent on it. I'm not dependent on the healthy feedback I get back because I have no idea what beautiful love looks like. What does beautiful growth look like? It stems with me. It stems with me going within to see what's the baggage I need to work on for myself. And I promise you when you do the self work and you take time out from realizing I was in a relationship that I enabled the toxic behavior because part of me inside is toxic. So I'm going to work on all of that. And when you take the time out and you come back into the dating scene, you will be shocked when you now start to have a green light on you that's radiating, I want equal balance. I want equal love. Because you want to be a giver in a relationship. Yeah. But you want to give it to the person that says, thank you for giving me this. I'm going to cherish the love, the emotion, the verbal, mental, physical love you give me. I'm going to put it in my soul and my heart, but I'm going to see how I can top up and give you more. And then that pushes you to feel, I want to top up and give you even more. Mm -hmm. That's healthy. giving. Okay. But so many of us don't understand what spectrum of giving am I in? Mm. Am I the giver where, you know, I get so many of these DMs where I write in and I text and I'm always the one chasing him and he doesn't do anything back. But the minute he gives me that little love, you just fill me to give you even more. Yes. But at what point do you and should you stop and realize where is this relationship going? Yeah. Does my partner need me to communicate my needs also matter? Are they now willing to take on my needs as well? Mm -hmm. Are we willing to work through a cycle we didn't know we were in? Now, that's a relationship that positively can grow and work. Because okay. it doesn't mean for anyone watching to turn around and say, I'm a giver, they are just a taker, I'm out of here. <laughs> okay. Because with that conversation, people can realize. But then it's also for you to turn around and say, I'm a giver mm -hmm. to a complete taker that has no value for who I am, does not want to change, smirks at the fact that I could have any potential needs. Now it's for you to realize this relationship has been an eye opener for me. It's a gift. So I'm not gonna be bitter about walking away. I'm yeah. going to thank the relationship for giving me myself back. It's almost given me my self worth back. Mm. It's showing me so much more is possible yeah. and you almost want to kiss the person you're about to break up with <laughs> <laughs> and thank them for that because that's how you healthily move on on the breakup and then completely work on yourself. Okay. I, I was just seeing this diagram in my head of a blood transfusion setup <laughs> where they take your blood. 
at first because they need it mm. and you're because you're helping but they keep taking and taking and you're drained and drained and drained to the point where there's nothing left to give exactly exactly and so now where do you reach you reach that point where i'm going to give me i'm going to take a moment back to literally find things that make me emotionally fulfilled what list could i make that would fill me emotionally okay. and then what rules could i put next to them that make it easy because sometimes we want to fill our needs emotionally physically verbally spiritually and in different kinds of relationships yeah. but the rules we make to get there are so difficult so i tell people with start with beautiful easy things which is not when my friends call me back i know i'm being loved when ah. the relationship i'm in you know the person hugs me every single morning 10 times a day it makes me feel loved mm -hmm. it's make rules that become easy for you okay. which means when i wake up in the morning and i just sip my first cup of tea it's about me and i feel love yes. i feel love from the cup of tea when i see my dogs i feel love you are now conditioning and reconditioning rules in your life to make you feel full and when you're full and radiating with this love yeah. and the other person comes in your presence it has to overflow beautifully but enough for you to retain for yourself okay so you're no longer relying on them it's not when i see my kali now i feel love it's almost i can see love in so many different ways in my day that you know you meet some people and you say this person radiates yeah. something out of them mm -hmm. it's you're radiating who you are the essence of your truth and so now when you choose to be a giver there's no consequence to it there's growth and love to it because me giving you fills you so much because yeah. you're also working on you so yes. there's a surplus that has to go out to the next person which fills themselves so much that has to go out to the next person. I'm not sucking from you and you're not sucking from me. Okay. Yeah. We are fixing relationships <laughs> <laughs> one human at a time and it's not coming from outside, it's coming from inside mm. and you have to take note of that that nobody should come be like I will fix you or I need them to fix me. You need to work on you and when you come back we'll be looking at the different ways that you can still give in a beautiful way and how you can work on yourself to make sure that you're living a healthy life yourself before you get into another relationship because if you're unhealthy then you're bringing it into the relationship if you're healthy then that's the vibe that you're going to bring into the relationship please send in your questions 3113441 that is our sms line it's just going to cost you a shilling to do that we'll be right back with Shazmin after the break Welcome back to Full Circle Thursday edition of the Shazmin Bank here. We're talking about the consequences of overgiving in a relationship and there's a difference between overgiving and being generous and we've also figured out that you need to pour in to yourself and that love is not from the other person. Love is in every beautiful thing but you need to be able to see it so if you see love unidirectional that I'm going to get it from Shazmin if it's not just me there's nobody else who can give me love then when she's mean decides that you are not the one for them mm. then now you feel like you've lost everything else how do i then pick myself up after realizing that i've been an overgiver and i need to do better about myself what do i do to just walk the journey of healing and loving me and filling me up okay that's such a beautiful question and i would say start spiritually not start spiritually with religion okay start spiritually with yourself connecting to the soul that nobody ever really talks about which is going within which means if i need to find or make a little part of my apartment or my house or wherever it is that i'm living a small part of it that when i see it i can sit and in that place i can put a little music on even if it's 3 to 4 to 5 minutes where i just go within i can sit and put my hand on my heart i will breathe in thank every part of me for being able to be there for me i will thank my legs for waking up every morning and giving me energy 
I thank my heart for being able to beat over 700,000 times a day for me without even telling it to do so. Yeah. I'll thank my mind. I'll probably go into my body and say, thank you for just even keeping me alive. And I've never even recognized you are me and you do that for that me. That is so powerful, Sean. It is so powerful. We're quick to thank other people and yes. other things and our employers yes. and our friends. But we never look right in and be like, thank you exactly my eyes yes I, I mean you you allow me to see such a beautiful world i almost feel that if i don't thank all of you i need to let all of you know how much i love and appreciate you oh. and so i would say start spiritually make a beautiful place in your room your ha anywhere that when you just see it it sort of feels this is the place that mentally pushes me to just come back to myself I'd then say, look at a hobby that you love, something that you feel whatever it is that I do just makes me super happy and allows me to connect with like-minded people in the same place. And then maybe pick up a beautiful book that you could read, pick up a highlighter so you actually get involved in the book as you're reading it. I'd say, you know, look at your friends again. Can you go out with different friends that benefit you in a beautiful way? Yeah. Not friends that bring you down, mm. but friends you can reconnect with, you can grow with. Put yourself in an environment where you completely become a student. So what course could I do? Who could I meet in my life where suddenly I'm just this student and I'm willing to learn mentally, emotionally, in whatever way. And it's not hard anymore because you can go onto YouTube. There's so many different apps. There's a beautiful app for anyone looking. It's actually called Mind Valley. Mind Valley. Valley. Literally, it is that. So we, my, Mendica notes. Mind <laughs> Valley yes. is the app you should be looking out for and let us know how it goes. So, mm -hmm. so it's, it's this beautiful app that literally has almost everything. You want to grow financially, it's got the best, best minds in that area. You want to grow mentally, the best minds. You want to get into like that beginning of that spiritual journey, which is just with myself. Yeah. It's probably got one of the best apps, which taught me how to be able to meditate. I looked at the meditation world is daunting as, you know, I have to like blur out noise. I have Isn't to stop that how thinking. It no. Really? No. I can't stop thinking when I try. I'm just thinking, you haven't read out your arrow for tomorrow. Exactly. <laughs> but it's it's the ability to be so present to those thoughts okay. that at some point you learn to find stillness in your thoughts. Okay. But this app was incredible because now I feel I've almost been doing meditation for a year. And I feel if I don't experience that during some point of my day, I almost feel like it's like you can't breathe. It's almost oh. like you've got to journal thoughts out and get things out of your head. But there's a connection you have when you just come back to you. I, it's a gift I don't know how to explain to people. If you could give a gift to yourself. Then this would be it. It would be to take time out and journey back into who you are. Because we forget That's that true. there's this whole world we live for. Probably 80% of it makes up relationships because that's what we're born for. We're born to find somebody, to love someone, to give to somebody. But we forget the first relationship that we have to do that with is it's not awesome. even ourselves, but the mm. essence mm. of ourselves. What am I born here to do? What footprints do I leave on earth that I want someone by my side to leave the same footprints with? So you're never in a relationship almost feeling I walk alone yeah. and I see my own footprints. But sometimes there's one set because my partner's carrying me and the other times there's two of us because we're walking together. Yeah. So it's for couples to also be able to realize, you know, maybe I could do something together. Maybe it's soul searching for the two of us together. So it's finding this deep, beautiful part of who you are and yeah. then you find a spouse or you find a partner that understands all of that, that sees you are so whole, you are so complete, that, you know, whatever you give me is almost this beautiful gift. And then what I give you, I feel, is like a cherished gift back. So you're never left drained. It's not the consequence then of giving. Yeah. It's the consequence of finding yourself so beautifully that you want to give somebody. 
Okay. So that's the very first part that we should begin, that we should mm. begin spiritually. Mm. Then where do we go next from that? Then look for a beautiful hobby you can okay. get into. Yes yes, yes, yes. Look for the beautiful friends you can connect with. Mm -hmm. Look for the family that maybe, you know, you can get into a beautiful space with. And not the family you get into space with where I'm still the one giving mm -hmm. or I'm the fixer. Because there's so many people that feel in family dynamics, I tend to be the fixer yeah. of all these situations. Mm. It's learning how to be in family uh, environments, in friend environments, where you have a beautiful boundary of no, I'm not able to do that. No, I'm aware I can see where the situation's going. And the instinct in me, the previous habit of me was to give, was to solve, was to fix. Because at some point, then I get love back. Yeah. But I'm going to be so aware of the pattern that I'm going to take a pause, I'm going to breathe, and I'm going to say this dynamic can solve itself without me. I'm here to be able to take from my family and friends in a beautiful way. I'm also in an environment where I can take positively. So put yourself in places where you're so aware. You're aware of your habit as a giver because you're reconditioning yourself all over again yeah. to be somebody that, if, if I'm taking, that's not selfish. If I'm taking, that's beautiful. I learn new things from other people in my life as well. And I like that you keep saying this all the time because we've grown up yeah. or we've been told over and over that you have to put others before you. Mm. So you put people before you and you put everyone else before you. So at the end of the day, you forget about who you are and how to give yourself. Because in giving ourselves, then we'll be told you're selfish. And then also giving yourself takes a lot. Choosing yourself also ch takes a lot from you to be able to be like, I am convincing myself that I'm doing this for myself and I deserve it. And who has time to give themselves? We have so much time to give other people because you feel immediate yeah. love. You feel immediate gratification. Mm. But no one's ever taught us that when you give yourself love, notice the feelings that come up for you. They're more stronger. Yeah. They're more powerful. We're not aware of that. We're, we're aware of instant gratification, mm. instant reward. But we don't realize that can come from within as well. So it's looking for anyone who feels I'm a giver. How can I put myself in a situation now where I draw beautiful boundaries around myself, where I still maintain being a giver, but not as a toxic enabler, but as somebody that's a giver to serve. Mm. There's a big difference with that. I'm giving to raise other people's energies beautifully yes. because I know what that means for me. Mm. I'm giving love to somebody because I know what love means to me. So I'm almost giving from a cup that I understand. I'm not giving to hopefully fill a cup and then feel empty, lonely and drained yeah. at the end of the day. And even as givers, most of the time, well, we talked about relationships and marriages a lot, but you can give mm. to other people as well. You can give to the less fortunate. You can spend your energies, your love, your care to orphans at an orphanage. It's yes. not necessarily supposed to just be directed towards this one person. Mm. But I think we cannot realize that if we do not give to ourselves to be able to be aware of other places where we can spread and share this love. And that's why so many people that find a beautiful hobby you end up getting passionate about the hobby, but then you can look for almost what's the gap or the niche in the market that I can use my hobby to give as a gift. Yeah. So I'm not getting anything in return. So for example, you know, if you love wildlife, yes. now you give back to wildlife. You, you feed the animals, you go on trips where you can do things for them. If you have a hobby where it's just, you know, normal photography of people, Offer the service beautifully. I want to make yeah. your wedding beautiful. I just want to photograph you guys as a gift back. So you find how your hobby could become of service. But the ultimate, obviously, in life is to be able to contribute. So we all have these six human needs. Two of them, which are spiritual, is growth and contribution. Oh. And it ends up being, how can I contribute to everyone around me because I am so full and when I'm so full, I'm radiating more people not mm. wanting to come take, mm. but more people wanting to also come give in that same energy so we all overflow together. You know, it's so weird you're talking about butt life. The next conversation I'm having is about... <laughs> And I'm just looking at you wondering, Shaz, do you know? You see, when you get you into told? the essence of your 
spirit you intuitively pick up. <laughs> So we're going to be talking about world life in the next one. But I'm looking at the dynamic of friendships, groups of friends, where you always feel like you're the one person, even in the setup of the groups where they'll be like, ah, if you need anything, Mukali will yes. always come through for you. Yes. She's always going to be there for you. She will, ah, she never lets us down. She always, she's the glue to this relationship and all of that. There's a burden to that as well. Yes, and it's, it's sometimes now letting them down, dealing with the pain you will feel of, will they not like me? Will I lose my friends? Am I rejected? You are dealing more with the withdrawal of telling somebody no and getting used to that and understanding what's going on inside of me. Yeah. I suddenly have a bit of time. Could I watch a movie? Could I read a book? Could I go for a walk? Should I join that gym? Wow, saying no was powerful because then my right friends will realize they sorted it out and sometimes, because you're the only person in the relationship feeling I'm just the giver, yeah. your friends go on with, oh, she couldn't do that. She couldn't make it. Okay, who else could fill space? They moved on. Yes, way before you do. Yeah. And so it's for you to be able to realize right now, what relationships in my life am I giving too much to? What is the cost of it? How can I slow down and put some boundaries around those areas? It's okay for me to have needs. So how do I tell different people in different relationships? I need some things fulfilled back mm. as well. Mm. What relationships don't need to be said that to, but just need to gently drift off on their own. And then it's to be able to now look at all the scenarios in your life. Okay. What areas completely mentally, where am I giving too much? Verbally, where am I giving too much? Because yeah. am I the solver of too many situations? Physically, my time, where am I giving too much? How do I take it back more for who I am? And there's nothing wrong with it. So it's okay to say no. Because the ultimate is to be able to contribute at a higher level. So you're not stopping to be a giver, to be selfish and become miserable on your own. No. You are stopping to be a giver in a toxic environment to learn you enable certain situations to move into a place where you can be of better service because you've realized a pattern you have. So now you will notice it in friends and family around you mm -hmm. so you can help them to be able to realize it. So you eventually this beautiful ripple effect of contribution. But it starts with your self-awareness. But the biggest trick when you're coming out of a situation as a giver yeah. is to always be aware. Be aware of how you feel. Be aware of what triggers you to feel that way. Mm -hmm. Be aware of, is there a trigger happening in me right now, feeling abandoned and rejected that I almost need to correct immediately. Mm -hmm. I need to just go give love so somebody can make me feel wanted. Okay. So pause and recognize what are the emotions and feelings that are going on within me mm -hmm. and how can I solve them myself? Do I need to breathe? What do I need to say to myself? What do I need to remind myself of? Because every situation, everyone else tends to move away. Yeah. Everyone grows and continues. I'm the one consistently left looking for someone to just keep watering me. Oh, goodness. So for people pleasers, no is a complete sentence. Mm. For the good reasons. And it, but it's how also you it's say it. It's how you no. say it. So it's like, I will not do it. I can't, well, you can So, you can't so do may, it, you can. maybe I love the option of that, <laughs> but I don't think I'd be available tomorrow. I okay. think tomorrow I've just got to do a couple of things for myself. How about next week? Next week sounds better for me. How about next week, Thursday, on my terms? Would that be okay for you? Thursday is mm -hmm. not good. Is Friday better? Great. We're both happy. Because you end up doing some things that you just said yes to. And then you said, yes, it's already here. And you're feeling, oh, my God, I'm drained. I don't want to do it. Yes. I don't have the energy. I, am, I do not have the enthusiasm <laughs> to show up and smile because I am not in the space for smiling. Exactly. But then what happens? You show up and then you drain. You're drained. You just can't wait for it to be over. So even after you've done the fake smiles on your way home, now you are dead. Yes, because you finally took that mask, mask off. off. And now you are just who you are, but you feel who you are is negative. You're not realizing I'm drained. 
what does that mean? Does yeah. that mean I need to say no to a couple of events, situations mm. and people? We don't realize that. We feel drained. We feel I need to top up on an electrolyte. I need to top up on vitamins. No, Something's you need wrong. to choose you. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. No electrolytes. <laughs> you just need to say yes to yourself. Yes. And I think this happens to me a lot when mm. I am invited to events. I'll be like, just show up. And I'll probably go ahead and make an outfit for the event because they need that. Mm -hmm. And then I'll be like, that's my money. <laughs> and then on the day, I'll be like, do I really have to? Yeah. Who do I even know who's going there, who I'm going to hang out with? Who, what will I do when I get there? And it's to choose what would I do alternatively? So I choose me. Yes. And I'll be like, I'm sorry. But then again, what happens in that situation is I probably not say that no, I will not be able to make it. I'll feel the need to say, oh, I'm so sorry, you see something came up. And now, so I'm giving an excuse as to mm -hmm. why I'm not saying an absolute no, I will not be able to make it. And that should be enough. And it should be able to say, I have had the longest week. Yes. I hope you appreciate how much I work during the week that I actually chose this Saturday to take the tiniest window out for myself. But I am going to follow you guys on social media. I'm going to cheer you guys on. But this Saturday, guys, this Saturday, I have to take for me. Who would ever say no to that? They wouldn't say no. They'll just be like, oh, we won't invite her for the next one. Mm -hmm. Which is okay. You better recognize because that event as well, I'm going to be choosing myself in a hot tub <laughs> with a great series. And I got me always. <laughs> so you have a way out for yourself. Okay. You have a way out for yourself. And our time is up. <laughs> Boaz, our time is up, right? Okay, cool. Our time is up, Shaz. Parting shot, social media. Okay. Parting shot would be. If you are a giver, there's nothing wrong with knowing that you were a beautiful giver, but it's being able to choose yourself first and the right relationships that value the giving you have and want to fill you back up. You can reach me on Instagram at being real, drop into my DM so we can talk. I'm always there for you. And Twitter, bank Shazman. Yeah. Tito one is yes. I, every time you say it, I'm just like, I realized I forgot the at bank Shazman. <laughs> You forgot the real now. No, I did at being real now. No. I did. No. I said Instagram at being real now. <laughs> Didn't I? So, <laughs> you can catch me on Instagram at being real now and Twitter okay. at Bang Shazman. <laughs> and we're going to take a very short commercial break. We'll be right back. So don't type that dial. This is Full Circle with Mikali. <laughs>